time. We're start, starting a few minutes late, so we'll try to, um, to jump in and, and get going. My name is Sean Hesse. I'm an architect with a firm called Immersion Design, um, and I was a, a fellow with the Climate Collab this year working on a resiliency contest. Um, but I've been uh, heavily involved with, with the Collab, so um, they've asked me to moderate this session as well. Um, so to get started, I guess what we'll do is just do some uh, quick names and, and titles of, of the people here at the front of the room, and then we'll do uh, some brief presentations from the winners, and uh, and then start a discussion around how we can move these proposals forward and what we, what we all collectively might be able to do together. So um, I'll start with um, the, the invited session experts. Uh, we have uh, Harvey Michaels, who's the director of the MIT Energy Efficiency Strategy Project. So. Uh, Harvey's over there, and then Stephen Connors, who's the director of the analysis group for regional energy alternatives, part of the MIT Energy Initiative. So, um, what we'll do, I think, is just kind of have each of you come up. Um, I think we've got slideshow and video uh, combinations, so we'll we'll cue those up as we go. Um, and so, our first um, uh, the first proposal is from Danielle Dahan. So this is about improving building energy performance through uh, green job skills training initiatives. So I'll let you take it away. Thank you. So my name is Danielle Khan. I'm an energy efficiency engineer. So I look for ways to find safe energy in buildings. Um, and one thing I've noticed a lot is building owners purchasing these really complicated energy management systems, <laughs> control systems, to control the heating and cooling systems in a building um, and save energy. And they're really complex, they're really expensive, and they have a lot of um, really cool ways to save energy, but then once the designers leave, the people who actually operate the buildings and take over often aren't skilled in the right, um, aren't trained in the right skills. The system starts to malfunction, um, and it's not maintained work very well, and then all of a sudden, the building is starting to use a lot more energy than it was originally intended. So um, you might see, a lot of times we'll see the maintenance professional, he's the one that actually gets, or she gets the phone call saying, um, my, my office is too cold in the winter when I get in the office. And rather than going into the energy management system and simply changing the control system to turn on the unit uh, an hour earlier before she gets in and heat up the space. Instead of doing that, he might go directly to the mechanical room and just put the unit in override, quickly switch it so that it's not being controlled at all by the system, and now it's running 24-7. It's The fan is um, running at full speed and it's full heating and cooling capacity. Um, and here she just simply did not know how to use the program very well. It's maintained in another building on a separate computer. Um, and as buildings become more and more complex with high performance sustainable buildings and lead buildings, the complexity of these systems and the, uh, the energy savings opportunities are growing exponentially, but yet the training is remaining stagnant. So these people aren't getting approved training to maintain these systems at all. Um, it's like taking maybe me or you, putting us in a cockpit of an airplane and telling us to just go. It's probably not going to go well for most of us at least. So, um, so I did a lot of research trying to find what, why, why are these um, people not receiving the right skill set, not receiving the right training, and what kinds of training programs are out there. So I found this really cool initiative that was recently launched called the BEST program, Building Efficiency for a Sustainable Tomorrow, um, and it won a $4 million grant from the Department of Energy recently. And that program seeks to address the training issue at the community college level. So it's trying to train, develop curriculum and train people in community colleges to better maintain these systems and achieve energy savings with these HVAC control systems. Um, I did more research and found that there's nothing happening at the technical high school level. So my proposal aims to mirror the best program but implement it at technical high schools because from my experience in the industry, I found that a lot of these people maintaining the systems, they stop their education at the technical high school and enter the workforce after that. So the goal of the program is to um, either gear them up for the community college program at the end of the technical high school program and help um, get them the right training um, and, and interested in that community college program or directly enter the field after, after the technical high school program and allow them to have the right skills to maintain these systems. Um, and so I really enjoyed the, this uh, kind of collab competition. 
on before the, the competition, I was mostly on my own trying to just research it, find ideas, come up with ideas, but this helped me to get it on paper and um, the voting was really cool to just get it out to all my colleagues and my network um, and start to get feedback and support from my managers, my, my colleagues, our, um, our clients too. Uh, and then partnering with one of our clients who's retiring soon, so he's been looking for something like this to do full time as a or part time um, as a volunteer. So we've been working together to start to develop these working sessions in the next few months where we're going to bring a lot of stakeholders from both of our networks, managers' networks, and start to talk with these um, the companies that build these building management systems and develop them with the people on site that are supposed to maintain them with community colleges and get all these people in a room for a few a few set technical sessions and program implementation sessions and start to develop, get their feedback on what should be in the program um, and what uh, what feedback they have on how we should develop the curriculum. So we're doing that over the next few months um, and then we're going to start hopefully launching the program within the next year or two um, working directly with community colleges. So looking forward to it, um, gotten a lot of support and uh, excited to speak more about the program with everyone here and get some more feedback on it. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, um, Suraj. <coughs> Hello, uh, my name is Suraj, and my proposal is called Passive Architecture Design Engines. I would just like to say a few facts before I go into what the topic is um, all about. The construction flow area in India is expected to increase by 80% in the coming two decades, as per an IEA report, and they also Estimate that 32 percent of it is going to be condition floor area, and what does it mean uh, with the energy numbers? In um, in 2010, uh, total energy production in India was 816 terawatt hours, of which 45 percent was for only uh, lighting and air conditioning buildings. And uh, as per our GBBM report, we are expecting uh, with the most of the efficient technologies, most efficient air conditioners, it's still going to be uh, to 650 terawatt hours in uh, 2030. Uh, this simply means one thing, with more and more efficient uh, air conditioners, we have also more and more usage. So, what is the solution uh, to this? Uh, there are currently uh, guidelines for energy energy conservation in buildings by Bureau of Energy Efficiency in India, but uh, are they the one-stop solution for everything? Probably not, because the guidelines are as good as uh, if you build in California, or if you build in Delhi, or if you build in, uh, I don't know, in a cold climate in Germany. So, yeah, is, uh, is, is, is it a solution that we stop building uh, more and more air conditioned buildings and start building non air conditioned buildings? No. Um, as, um, there are textbook solutions for uh, building in tropics on how to build good naturally ventilated buildings, but ideal textbook solutions do not work in the real world. And most of the best architects are working in this field complain that the buildings they design are not actually being used uh, the way they are supposed to be. So is it that we blame the user for it, and then the discussion will be very much on qualitative. My pitch was that we should address the issue of sufficiency with the same rigor as we address the issue of, uh, issue of efficiency. But sufficiency is something to be quantified. It cannot be a very uh, qualitative uh, aspect. How does one put it uh, to just take it in a one word, for example? It's as simple as this. In a, in a, in a climate where you have a design sky of 10,000 lux, if you were to build a 80% glazed building with very high efficient glazing and provide 20% daily area, maybe that's, that is considered efficiency, but what sufficiency is, when you have a design scale of 10,000 lakhs, you should be able to build a building with 20% glazed area and still get 80% daily area. So that's where the trick lies. So, uh, this is also a basic proposal that I'm trying to put forward and trying to work with a couple of universities in Germany and India. So I'm looking for more more uh, concrete critique on how this can be taken forward because passive buildings, as I said, uh, do not always operate the intent to be. And so I'm trying to look at uh, passive and mixed mode buildings on how to uh, get good freedom in buildings and projects. Thank you very much. The United Nations report suggests that the number of Indian citizens living in urban areas 
will reach 900 million by 2050. Massive building construction is underway to respond to this urbanization. Indian government plans to build 100 smart cities. It is estimated that the total commercial grid space would increase fivefold between 2005 to 2030. India has this opportunity to capture savings in these buildings which are going to be built in the future. To meet these goals, we have climate responsive building envelope will play a critical role. Building fenestration systems account for 80% of total energy use in ocean building in India. Climatic design is an important aspect of energy efficient building design. But climatic design is not easy to implement. So I propose COFA. Climate optimized fenestration assembly. COFA will be an innovative tool that will be integrate climate responsiveness in building design. During the schematic design phase, COFA will be integrated with geographical information system mapping tools. Details about the project's site data can be entered, and COFA will give customized guidelines on sustainable envelope design considering climatic zone, weather parameters, and local building ports. This will be a huge intervention towards energy savings during the schematic design phase. During the design development stage, COFA will optimize the annual energy efficiency associated with installing different envelope products like fenestration wall assemblies, diagonal fins, sharing devices, and complex fenestration systems. COFA will analyze the impacts of passive design measures of ventilation, shading, and daylight. During the post design analysis phase, we will provide a COFA rating based on the effectiveness of the design compared to a baseline building. Nationwide enforcement of COFA guidelines will yield annual savings of 2 billion kilowatt hour. The control of greenhouse emissions at such a large scale will have a positive impact throughout the world. The proposal to cost around 1.5 million US dollars to develop the COFA software tool, set up of lab facility for research and development, conducting field tests and validation, and financial support for the research team. Thank you. Actually, uh, I just wanted to keep it a short video, so I thought, uh, because I wanted to show these images and uh, also show the interface of how uh, COFA is going to work. Because uh, what's happening is currently, as architects, uh, we tend to uh, analyze the building once uh, the design is already been done. So this one, I want to do something so that uh, during the schematic design phase itself, uh, we can uh, intervene into our uh, localized, we can provide localized solutions to uh, different site conditions. And uh, this I initially want to start with uh, different climatic zones in, uh, in the Indian context, but I think this can uh, go forward in uh, other developing nations and uh, uh, the thing is uh, about developing nations is not about retrofitting old buildings it's about new development so uh, there is a lot of opportunity because uh, the government is planning to build 100 cities and uh, the commercial floor space which uh, which is my area of interest is the commercial building envelope so uh, because the heat transfer through the uh, the glazing systems is about five times more than uh, in other parts of the building envelope so the climate optimized fenestration will be the key for energy savings in the future. So, uh, with the, I want to also set up a lab facility where uh, I can uh, experimentally validate uh, building envelopes uh, for different climatic zones and also uh, look into uh, some kind of life cycle cost analysis uh, about uh, uh, the different products that I'm going to work with. And also, uh, the scope of software tool, I want to have. Uh, these different templates of uh, different companies so there will be a direct connection uh, with the product manufacturers so that we can use their products uh, and uh, analyze their uh, impacts on energy 
series. So uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Okay, so let's um, spend just a couple of minutes and get some general feedback, I think, from uh, both Harvey and Stephen, and then um, we'll either, judging how many people are in the crowd, we might be able to split up and do some smaller groups and have some smaller discussion um, specific to the, to the proposals um, and how we might move those forward. So I'll pass the mic. So uh, 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 good morning, everybody. Steve Connors at the MIT Energy Initiative. Uh, congratulations to all three of you. Uh, you you've uh, hit upon some very, very important topics, and I just want to give some general concepts about uh, uh, that all three of you are not nearly as aggressive as you should be in terms of the potential impact of your ideas. That's a, that's a good thing. You're asking for about the right amount of money. You guys aren't looking for near enough money relative <laughs> to the challenge and the benefit, okay? Um, but let me give, give you a quick uh, uh, a couple thoughts. Is uh, 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 Sriyash and, and Pretty, uh, uh very good in terms of uh, providing an informational tool in the, in the design phase? I think you both hit that. Uh, Sriyash, you're aiming at providing uh, energy efficiency standards or, or, or updated codes. But I think where it overlaps with Pradeeps is that you're both sort of aiming at here's an additional uh, design tool and uh, essentially suggesting uh, a, a near optimum or at least good starting point for building design based upon the local conditions of the architect or the, or the, uh, or the, the, the building, the construction company or the developer in your area. And that's very, very important uh, in the building technology program here. A few years ago, they had a student's a team of students working on what's called Design Advisor, and they were trying to essentially do uh, similar to what uh, you're suggesting, Pradeep, is you use the computational models, and then you have a reduced form so that an architect that doesn't want to learn Energy Plus or something like that, you know, can go in and, and get a sense of, of, of uh, where they should start as opposed to copying and building design that was for central europe or something like that right so, so that's very good and of course uh, uh other folks in this team and elsewhere at mit are also been very interested in the natural ventilation versus active ventilation versus full-scale air conditioning anyway where do you go from one to the other and, and, and so you have uh the phrase i use is uh well there's how efficient is the air conditioner but there's the efficiency of turning things off. And through even better building design, there's the efficiency of never having to turn it on. And if you never have to turn it on, well then maybe maybe you didn't even have to buy it and install it in the building. So, so that's, that's the idea there. And then Danielle, you're on the other side and it's been built, how do we make sure it gets used wisely? And I thought, uh, you know, uh, it's a very interesting need. You found one good program for the community college. How can you get that down and, and train people even earlier? And then I started brainstorming as well. Green jobs uh, are are often a lot of uh, greening existing jobs. So what about all the HVAC technicians already out there? What can we do in terms of a short certificate program? What's the balance of sort of what they can do online versus obviously the very important hands-on and then, of course, in this crazy world, the, the building operator, the maintenance guy, he might be for a suite of buildings across the city. You know, they're remotely monitoring it. And then how do we, how do we design the program for fast implementation for the buildings that are already out there that, in a retrofit mode, you might have, uh, you, you might have put in a system post-building commissioning. And then it's even a greater challenge for tra training the people who are responsible for operating that building? So those were those were my my quick, short, and succinct brain dump. <laughs> I'm Parker Michaels. Uh, I'm at MIT. I've been here for six years, focused on energy efficiency. But I, I got into the efficiency field while well, a student here in the '70s when it first we we became more cognizant of its importance. And what's really intriguing about where the three of you are is that you're building on things that are going on, that have been done, that my colleagues, uh, Steve, over the years, 
uh, we've done some things, but we haven't done enough. And you're, you're, you're finding the shortcomings and expressing important improvements. I think we also need to realize that we're in a trans transition to why efficiency is important, uh, which is what this whole meeting is about with the, the climate focus. You can look at the analog that climate is like an asteroid speeding to Earth that's going to hit, that we need to do a lot more and a lot more aggressively considering the worldwide uh, issues that we need to address. And efficiency is such a huge part of the solution that finding better ways to get it done is a is really important calling. And I, I appreciate that you all are as focused on it. So I find your, your presentations and approaches linking together so wonderfully. And I, I hope that part of the conversation is together and how you might drive some things forward. We need good buildings. You all know that. We all know that. It's an important part of it. On one hand, we have to know what a good building is. And Sri Raj, you're pointing out that GRIHA and the other standard ways of doing it are not identifying good in all the right ways, considering that, uh, that as economies grow in the developing world, the sense of what we're entitled to in terms of comfort is changing and understanding how our built form is going to change in a way that is sufficient, as you mentioned it, or fair, is an important part of the puzzle that isn't being fully addressed yet in the other building scoring systems for, for what is a good building. Uh, Pradeep, you're saying, here's how we design a good building. And that, that having that relate to the definition of a good building in some, in some context that's connected. And Danielle, you're putting on the table that how do we keep a building operating to be good? It may have been designed as a good building. It may have been built as a good building, but it doesn't naturally stay that way unless the people who are actually working in the building <laughs> have the right training and tools to get it done. So to me, the, the real elegance here is finding a way Steve said, you need more money. And one reason why you will get more money is that if together you've created something which is a very substantial and impactful uh, element of the solution to climate change. Okay. Thank you.